Hi, welcome to the video. So this is going to be edit one of three for this video. So um, stay tuned for the rest. And on this one, I want to remove these posters from the wall here. So I'm going to use the patch tool for this. So let's duplicate the background layer. So have it selected and press either com Control or Command J to create a duplicate, it's depending on if you're a PC or a Mac. Zoom in a little bit and just go up. So I'm going to click the patch tool, which is this icon on the side. It's under the same drop down as the healing brush tool and the spot healing brush. Go down to patch tool. Now this only works on a solid layer, so you can't use it on a, a blank layer, which is why I made a duplicate. And what we're going to do, we're just going to draw with the patch tool just outside of this poster, making sure we 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 capture all of the poster in, in the um, selection itself. And then what we're going to do is make sure that source is selected at the top here, um, which it is by default. And that just means now when we click and hold down our button on the area we've selected and drag and move the mouse, and we've got a button held down here, the area under where the cursor now is, is kind of being projected into that selection. And when I let go, so try and get an empty piece of wall, when I let go, it's going to try and blend that area and patch it over our selection. So it's actually done a really good job. There's a couple of bits we need to fix, but if I go in, you can see this image is really grainy and noisy, and it's brought over and blended in that noise and that grain basically perfectly. If we'd have just done a clone tool or something like that, or just copy and pasted the pixels over just manually, um, you wouldn't have anywhere near that, that good of a blend. So now I'm just going to go around using the patch tool again to just try and remove some other things I don't want from the image. So these little lost scratch lines coming out the top of the um, the head of the subject, I want to get rid of those. Now this is one downside of the patch tool. You see how it's going up against the hair? Now the patch tool, if it touches, if you've got something you're removing and it's touching another line or another surface or something like that, it can lead to a bit of color bleeding where it smudges the color out. It's done it a little bit there, but because the hair on this subject's like not very neat anyway, and it's sort of outdoors and a bit windy, I think I can get away with it. But if that was a harder edge, um, it would be quite obvious and you'd probably need to clean up the very edge part where it meets the hair with maybe a different tool like the clone tool or something like that. So once we've gone around and done that, I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to use the same tool on this sign up here. Why not? I'm just going to click and drag it down again to do that. There's one other thing here I want to get rid of, and this is why you can, it's possible but with the patch tool, you just got to be very careful. There's this little mark on the wall next to a hairline there, and I want to get rid of that just because it almost touches a hair, so it, it just looks a little bit in the way and cumbersome but it really close to a hair. So you're going to have to be very careful with the patch tool on this one that you don't go into a hair. Um, I'll, I'll show you what happens. If I was to go into the hair like that with the selection, and then I drag this to a clean piece of wall up, see how it's sort of going into a hair. If I let go of that, you end up with that smudged kind of bit of the hair there that just looks blurry and a bit bad. So that's the downside of the patch tool. But if there's even a tiny gap where they're not touching, you can just sneak it round and you can have a really good result with no blurring. Okay, right, on to example number two. So for image two out of three, we've got this butterfly here. It looks like a really nice blue butterfly sitting on the green um, branches and things like that. But the subject is smack bang in the middle of the frame, which from a compositional point of view is really boring and just it doesn't really draw your eye. It doesn't help to sell your image. So I'm just going to recrop this um, and just recompose it by cropping alone. And this can be a very powerful technique to really help images just really jump off and work when they might just look a bit meh to start with. So go into the crop tool, which is up here. Make sure that delete cropped pixels is off. It's not checked because um, that means then you can adjust the crop after the fact. I'm going to go to on this one, fix ratio four by three, just because that's what the original's in, but you can recrop it to whatever ratio you like. Now you've got these vertical and horizontal lines here on this grid that appears, and that's the, that's like the rule of third guides. So how this works generally, I mean, it's not an absolute cast in stone rule, but the general rule of thirds is that main subjects or points of interest in your image should either be on a, roughly along either of the two horizontal lines, sorry, vertical lines, or the two horizontal lines, 
or where either of those intersect. So by example, if I bring this crop down here, if I move this here, so the butterfly is now on, almost on an intersecting point, then that is gonna be more of an appealing composition to the human eye than it would be if the butterfly was just smack bang in the middle as it, as it was. Now, you can go the other way you could say put it in this point up here, but what that's going to do is it's, even though it's probably a better composition than it being in the middle, it's going to make it look cramped because the the object and the, the butterfly is now really close to the edge of the frame. So even though it's on one of those crossover points, that's going to make the image feel claustrophobic and just not what you want for a nature kind of shot. So we are going to take this and move this butterfly so it's at the intersection point on the bottom left maybe just the just the crop so you're not losing you know you, you losing as little background as possible we'll still be roughly on that it's not an exact science but i'm going to sort of put it as that and now in front of the butterflies press return to just accept the change now the butterfly has got it's not centralized anymore so it's off center onto one of these uh, rule of thirds guideline points Actually, I'm going to just adjust that a little bit more and push it more towards the center of the butterfly. But it's still got a lot of space in front of it um, instead of the other scenario. So now it gives it the impression of, you know, an open atmosphere like it would be outside. The butterfly's got room to take off and fly away. And it's just a lot less kind of awkward and stressful composition than having something right at the side. So this kind of thing is a lot more suitable to um, images like this. Okay, on this shot, we've got cake with a lot of frozen berries on the top. Now, I like the idea of this with the frozen berries, but there's two areas that I want to improve on this straight away. One, I don't like how the cuts are in the cake. They just kind of cut the shape of a slice out, but just haven't taken the slice out of the cake off the plate. So it just looks kind of strange. These lines it makes it look a bit messy. And also I like the frosted berries, but it would be nice if I could get some more color to sort of poke through some of the heavier frosted elements. So I'll show you how to do that. So there's two main things I want to fix on this. So the start, I'll just duplicate the background layer by pressing Control and Command J. And let's see, there's lots of tools we could use to remove these and fill in these gaps. But as I used in the first uh, video, let me try the patch tool. So I'm just going to go to the patch tool. It's going to draw around these gaps here. Just circle it around the back. Let's try and drag this into an area of undisturbed um, cake. As you see, we've got a little bit of that bleeding I was telling you about where the colour bleeds when it gets too close to the edge. Talking about earlier, but it's nothing too drastic. I'm not too worried about that. And now we'll try it on this area here. So there's a bit of a shadow there from the berry, so we'll see how it, if it tries to fill that in. That'll be interesting. Okay, it kind of has, yeah. I mean, it's got a bit of a dark spot there. Again, I'm not going to get too surgical about this at the mo um, at the moment. Now we've got this bit of a gap here. Now this normally is not the ideal use case for the patch tool here, where we're getting into a lot of detail. And there's a lot of things touching and edges because it's it can could just cause it to be a bit of a mushy. Um, mess but we'll try it anyway and we might get away with it just because of how busy this area is so it doesn't look it doesn't look brilliant but what I can do is go shift command or shift control F no that doesn't work okay let me do that again so what I can do now is temporarily switch to the magic replace tool and just click replace with nothing selected and it should do its best to try and read the read the image and see what it should go what should go there and that looks better honestly though you could just use if you didn't want to use magic replace you could just use um clone stamp or anything like that so we'll carry on and i'll go back to the patch tool and I'll just do these. Now, for those of you on the free version, I know when you use the Magic Replace tool, it comes up and asks you um, if you to use it from the free, you have to um, oops, do that again. 
you have to watch two ads or you have to watch some ads just click yes the last time i checked which was recently they were very short and unintrusive ads like so it was quite easy and quick to just watch through them really quickly and then just skip and get it working but that's why i'm trying to not use it for everything on here because as convenient as magic replace is to remove objects it sh shouldn't really take up take over as your bread and butter tools um until you need it just because it has some problems but i am going to try and use it here again sorry let me go back magic replace use it here to try and just remove this last part of the cut again it's tricky area here for the patch tool and um, I'm putting nothing in the content box because if you don't put anything and click replace it's basically the same as click and remove but sometimes it gets a better result in my eyes and we're just looking at something resembling the surface of that cake to be replaced and as you can see it's done a nice job of rounding off that berry there so I'm going to just merge these um, these layers here these two magic replace layers with the main just to tidy up a bit so I've got all three selected in the layers panel I'll press control or command E and I'll just merge them all together so we can see that's that so now I've fixed the um, now I've fixed those lines I've got rid of all those um, cut marks which are making it look really untidy in my opinion I'm just going to remove this little bit of this lavender petal there or the part of the lavender plant which I don't particularly like on there. So that's that's one that's one thing. Second thing is I want to bring some more colour in these berries. So this is quite a good simple technique you can use on a lot of things. So notice this this raspberry here. It's got quite a bit of the colour poking out through the the sort of iced frosting on it from it being a frozen berry. But none of the rest really have. Now you've got different berries here, you've got blackberries and blueberries. But just as an example, um Kind of a quick and easy way to do that is create a blank layer, change the blending mode to soft light. You can play with different uh, blending modes, but soft light is always a good bet. And in this case, I'm just going to pick a red color from the exposed raspberry here. So I hold down the Alt key and my brush tool will temporarily become an eyedropper and you click on it and then I've sampled that color. So now I'll make sure I've got a nice soft brush my brush tool increase the size to something um make it a little bit harder increase the size to something sensible and now wherever i want there to be more hint of that red i can now just paint on now make sure you go over things that should actually be red in the first place and not blackberry because it's it will look strange if you make every berry here you know the same kind of red now some of them will be naturally darker because the soft light is a contrast blending mode which is good because you don't want everything to be the same you don't want everything to be the same color and the same sort of tonal range it just seems strange so to have some darker and some popping off there that's absolutely fine and you can also try a new layer and just change it to color blending mode and just see what effect that has now it might be way oversaturated at the start it's not adding any contrast it's just forcing all the tones to be the same so again you can just reduce the opacity of that afterwards and with a combination of just a couple of um, variants here you can go back and forth and you can just bring a bit of life to some of these berries again you don't have to paint over the whole berry you can just do a little bit there so it's it's a lot less uniform and it might just make it look a bit more natural 